hi and welcome to this third video on the topic of operation research the first two videos we discussed about the introduction to LP model and the second video uh, discussed about the graphical solution of the LP model in this video we will start looking at the simplex method to solve the linear programming problems now simplex method is a very popular method to solve LP problems in this video we will look at some basic concepts that uh, are very commonly used or will be very helpful in understanding the simplex method solution for the LPP now simplex method computations are very tedious long repetitive and sometimes it might become boring and in my experience I have noticed students easily carrying out these very tedious calculations but they lose track as to why they are doing it so we we'll look at each iteration as an interpretation in terms of the solution to the original problem so whatever step we are doing in a simplex problem or in a simplex method we will interpret it as to why we are doing it and we'll refer back to the original problem at hand okay so now let's uh, start with the understanding of the simplex method uh, there are two main requirements to compute uh, by using simplex method the first requirement to use simplex method is that all the constraints all constraints must have must have a non negative right hand side so the numbers on the right hand side of all the constraints should be non negative or positive second one all variables okay all variables that is your decision variables should be non negative so these two conditions are the primary conditions to apply simplex method to solve uh, an LPP okay now let's look at some very important pointers in the simplex method now uh, constraints are normally less than equal to okay so in a less than equal to constraint when you have a less than equal to constraint the RHS the RHS the right hand side is a limit on the availability of the resources okay so as we studied this in the formulation of an LP the right hand side basically is a restriction to the amount of resources you can use and the LHS LHS shows the usage of the resources and how much are using now this means LHS should always be less than or equal to RHS this means your usage should always be less than or equal to the availability of the resources okay now the second point you should always remember the difference between the RHS and the LHS that is RHS minus LHS okay this is termed as the unused or slack amount of the resource so this much resource is not being used so that is the difference between the maximum availability and the usage so this is also something very important okay 